This is my birth announcement of Mia. Uh, so she was born on April 20th, uh, so she's almost a year old. Um, 460 grams and 22 inches, which is pretty small for a macaque infant. It's definitely on the uh, lower range. Um, but she was healthy, so that's what matters. We'll start out with our parents. Higgins is the father. Uh, he's one of our three possibilities of our three viable males. We have Kitsy, Keisho, and Higgins. Uh, we sent off DNA samples of the three boys, um, Cindy and Mia, and it came back as Higgins is determined the father, and he's actually our underdog. He's our lowest ranking male. Um, Kevin was actually rooting for him. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> he turned out to be the father. Um, on Monday, though, he's going to be moved to Sioux Falls um, with Keisho, so we'll only have one male left over that can produce babies. And Cindy's the mom. Unfortunately, last year she miscarried, so this isn't her first pregnancy. Um, but it was difficult, and she was determined to have preterm labor, so we immobilized her the week before Mia was born uh, to confirm the health of the fetus, and we got this really awesome x-ray. Um, so... After Mia was born, we immobilized Cindy to try to reattach her because she wasn't um, showing any maternal care. Um, unfortunately, she wasn't producing milk and she didn't show any affection or, or what we would call affection um, or motherly care. So it was determined that she would be a good candidate for hand rearing. Uh, the reason why uh, we think Cindy didn't take to the infant is because paternal care is a learned behavior for macaques. Um, and in our troop, uh, we haven't had an infant for 17 years, and Cindy's about 17 years old, so she's never, she was one of the uh, last infants born here, so she wouldn't really remember it. And there's also a high rate of infant abandonment in the wild and in captivity, so we definitely knew this was a possibility, and we were prepared if this was the situation. Um, so we put every effort forth to get uh, Cindy to raise Mia. It would have been a lot easier. Uh, she still would have been just as cute, uh, but unfortunately it didn't work out. Uh, we followed protocol, and then we had incubator all warmed up, and blankets and towels and formula stuffed animals for her to clutch to, um, all set up and holding. So since she was determined to be a good candidate for hand rearing, uh, we started her with eight feedings a day around the clock, so Val and I switched off nights um, and stayed overnight at the zoo, which is kind of scary if you've never been here at night. I got to meet some skunks and some cats and some other creatures running around that will scare you. <laughs> um, so we started with uh, Similac Advanced uh, Formula and we actually used the pre-mixed formula first because at 3 a.m. that's the last thing you want to do. Realize you're out of formula and you have to mix more. Um, we also started with a kitten nipple which is very small. Um, and Mia didn't take to it well, and Val and I were sitting in macaque holding, kind of staring at the other monkeys. We're like, well, well, that's not exactly the same as a macaque nipple. So we found a small human nipple that's more to the size and shape of a macaque nipple. And she took to it a lot well, or a lot better. It worked out really well. Uh, nine days old, we started feeding her on a platform. So right here, we have her swaddled. And here, she's on the platform. And I have it over there, nicely set up, because I broke it this morning. Um, Aaron made it for me. Don't tell him I broke it. Uh, so we switched her over, uh, starting with one feeding a day to the platform. Um, we have a nice furry fabric on it, so she has something to grab onto, much like she would, she, like she would on a mother. Um, and this made it a lot easier for us, because trying to swaddle a monkey is quite hard when she just wants to move around. <laughs> she also developed a fever at um, the first couple weeks. Uh, we put her on seven days of antibiotics, and she was just fine. She got over it, no problem. She did stop eating for a while, which was kind of scary, but she got over it. Val wasn't as worried as I was, but I was freaked out. <laughs> so once she got used to eating off the platform, we moved it inside of her incubator. This was a lot easier for us and for her. She didn't, we didn't have to take her out and wrap her up. Uh, all we had to do was stick it in there, and she would climb right on it. She was very food motivated. So at two weeks old, she really started gaining coordination and she started jumping all over the incubator. So I have some really cute pictures of her playing with toys and climbing on things. And there's another really cute picture of her. 
We also started putting her in her nursery pen, or we call it the small squeeze, so I might use that interchangeably throughout the rest of this. Um, we also put a hammock in there, so she was at the window level, so you can see it's kind of a space under there. And she got to interact with the monkeys, there she is with Keisho, um, and she would actually run up to them and stare at them and watch them, so that was pretty cool. Also at two weeks old, we reduced her feedings to seven times a day, um, and every two weeks after that, we took out a feeding until we were down to two a day. Uh, we started offering her solids, so we moistened her monkey biscuits with um, formula, so it would be kind of a similar taste, so she'd recognize it. Um, the press release was sent out, and she also took her first trip outside, so that's what these pictures are from. We put her in a crate, and we took her outside. We figured she'd like the fresh air. Um, and she was kind of scared the first time. It was a big world out there for her. Um, and we would continue to take her outside and put her in the transition pen so she could see the monkeys during the day, depending on temperature, because at this time it was still pretty chilly out. And also the webcam went live, so people could watch me at 24 hours a day if the lights were on, if they could see her. Or if they caught us at 3 a.m. when we were feeding her. So five weeks old, we started offering her our first human baby foods, we got some Gerber carrots, and we mixed that in with our biscuits, and she seemed to like that really well. We w decided on carrots, because um, we didn't want to give her something too sweet, so she develops a nice little sweet tooth and wouldn't eat anything but, but she still really enjoys carrots, so we didn't spoil her or anything. <laughs> At six weeks, we moved her outside to the transition pen, uh, so we made this um, howdy cage for her. Uh, so she has her own little area, and transition pen is the space between the exhibit and the building. Um, so the public could see her every day from four to or 10 to four. Uh, six weeks old, we started feeding her from new bottles. So we went from this bottle to a larger bottle, larger nipple. Um, we went to an angled bottle so we could start feeding her on the outside of the incubator, the first picture. And we're also feeding her on the outside of the transition pen, so we didn't have to go back in there. We could just go around to the outside. So, and this is her eating in the nursery pen, and we also made a bottle holder so we didn't have to stand there and wait for her to eat. And sometimes she would get really distracted and just want to play and not eat, so this way we could walk away and she could concentrate on eating. At seven weeks old, uh, we took away our incubator. She was getting too big for it, so we moved her full time to the nursery pen and the transition pen. And she started eating Baby Puff cereal. If you've never seen them, they're kind of like Cheerios, but they kind of melt or dissolve, so they can't choke on them. Um, and then we began, began the howdy process. So for anyone that doesn't know, um, a howdy is where animals can touch each other through mesh, um, but they can't like physically um, attack each other or hurt each other. Uh, so we started with Emmy and Fluffy. So we put Emmy and Fluffy in the transition pen and she went into her little mesh cage. Um, and one of her favorite things to do during this process was to climb up and pull on the hairs of the monkey sitting on top. <laughs> um, so it went so well with Emmy and Fluffy, we added Babyface and Cindy. Um, for the most part, they didn't really care. They're like, yeah, it's a baby monkey, whatever. I think uh, Mia enjoyed it more than anyone else. Um, and we also started doing an overnight howdy. So we have a mesh shift door uh, in our nursery pen. So we would put the monkey she'd been howdied with um, with her overnight so they could see each other overnight. Um, kind of help the process along a little bit better. So I'm switching over to months now instead of weeks. So at two months, we continued adding females to the howdy. Uh, once we added males to it, uh, we decided to give them access to the whole exhibit as well as the transition pen because there was just too many monkeys in such a small space. And this also gave Mia the cho or the other monkeys the choice to be around Mia. If they didn't really care, they could go on the exhibit. If they wanted to be on, around Mia, they could hang out in the transition pen. So we had the entire troop howdied at nine weeks old. Uh, she also started eating canned carrots, green beans, and peaches and pears. Um, they're softer than if you would just give them to her raw or, or boil them, which would have been a lot more work. Um, she really enjoyed peaches and pears a lot. <laughs> and she also made her first adventure onto the patio pen, which is the outside pen on the south side of the macaque building. So people could still see her there, um, just not as easy. 
And she really liked being out there because it was a lot bigger space for her to be outside. She got to jump on branches and chew on sticks and sit on things and roll around on the spools. So she really enjoyed being out there. Um, also two months, we started introductions, which was really scary. We, would, we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, so we started with Fluffy and Emmy. That's what we did the Howdies with. Um, and it went pretty well. It went the same as the Howdy. They were kind of just like, yep, there's a baby monkey there. It's fine. Which was a big relief. I thought one of them was going to steal her away, never bring her back. Um, so the following day, we added Cindy and Babyface. And the same thing. They just were like, OK, yep, she's there. <laughs> Um, and she started weighing one kilogram, which was our goal weight to start introductions. So we were right on track. Um, so at two months, she, her favorite foods are yogurt. And she still really loves yogurt a lot. <laughs> and she also really likes playing in water. She plays in water like outside right now. If it's slightly above freezing, she'll be playing in it, even though it has to be cold. So three months old, we added May and Nubs to the intro group, and it pretty much went the same. Um, but we started protected contact. So from her birth to now, we were picking her up if we had to. Um, we were moving her from area to area. But she was starting to get a little difficult, um, getting a little bigger. So protected contact, so this is how we treat the rest of the monkeys. We only interact through mesh. So from now on, we didn't get to pick her up and hold her anymore. So Val and I took one last picture of each of us with holding her. Um, this is also a good example of what we wore for PPE. Um, in Macaque, we're always wearing a white jumpsuit. You may have seen us on exhibit. Um, and a face shield when we're cleaning. But since we were touching Mia, we also had a face mask on. And we were wearing waterproof lab coat over it. So it was even more things to wear. So four months old, uh, the intro group started warming up to her. So they would actually let her sit next to them, <laughs> even touch them sometimes. <laughs> um, and we also did overnight intros. So she really liked being with monkeys so much, we let her have her access to them overnight. Um, went very well. She seemed to be um, very tired in the morning from running around and playing with all the monkeys and chasing them. Um, we also added Chuck to the intro group. And these are pictures of Mia with Chuck. Um, and they turned out to be really good friends, you could call them. Um, Chuck is our low-ranking male, um, so he's pretty tolerant. Uh, he would let Mia climb on him, and she'd sit next to him. And he might even protect her a little bit, hold her up. So um, as she's gotten older, though, he actually disciplines her a lot more than anyone else. If she's being annoying, he'll push her away or hold her down. Stop that. Don't do that. <laughs> Uh, she also started climbing on shelves. You can see that in these pictures. Um, so before, she was limited to the ground. And now she's figured out how to climb everywhere. So that's good. Progress as a monkey. She can be a little bit more ornery with the other monkeys at this point. So they first could hide from her on a shelf. Now there's no getting away from Mia. <laughs> so five months old, we had been giving her two bottles a day. Um, we wanted to continue the two bottles um, past um, the two weeks we'd been given. But, so we'd, she would come back to us twice a day. Um, like I said, we don't, we're only um, having contact with her through mesh. So she would come back to us today. We could check her out. We could make sure nothing's wrong. She didn't have any injuries or anything. We started limiting that bottle to 100 milliliters when she was having 160 to 175, whatever she chose to have. So this was a big cutback for her. Um, we're hoping she would start eating more solids at this point being um, more monkey food. Uh, she also had access to the whole building. So she could run around. She isn't familiar with everything in there. So if we have to put her somewhere overnight with some another monkey, or because we could switch them all around, she was OK with it. Nothing new and scary. And we also added Bud. He's our beta male. Um, and he took to Mia pretty well, too. Um, our males are actually very accepting of Mia compared to the females, which is understandable. Macaques have a matriarchal society, so the females are really um, tight-knit community. So it can take them a little longer to let others in. And she also weighs a kilogram and a half at this point, so she's getting huge. 
So six months old, uh, we decided to move intros into the transition pen. We were doing it in holding because it's a more controlled environment. Uh, we could separate them if we needed to. We could, it's just a lot easier to control it. Um, so on the first day in the transition pen, she really enjoyed it out there. Not much different from the patio. Uh, so the next day we decided, let's put her on exhibit, see what happens. Uh, so these are first day on exhibit pictures. Uh, she hung out with Chuck most of the day because they're such good friends. Um, it was kind of scary for her at first and she was a little freaked out because that's a really big world for a monkey that's been living in such a small area of the macaque holding building. So <laughs> six months old continues. Uh, we've reduced feedings to once a day. We actually substituted her morning feeding for yogurt and since she loves yogurt so much she didn't really notice or care that she was not getting that bottle anymore. Um, we also added Kimmy to the group, and she's our last female that's not the alpha female. So at this point, we have all our females together, and the troop is more of a whole. So they start acting more like themselves. And we had a couple of aggression issues. Um, Cindy and Emmy actually did not want Mia around at all. Um, but Mia learned very quickly that Emmy is not to be dealt with. <laughs> so if Emmy's upset, Mia knows to avoid the situation. She still does right now. Um, Cindy isn't as aggressive now. Uh, we had to break up a, a couple times, but after the first day, um, Mia learned quickly, so didn't have any problems with her getting hurt. And this is a picture of her with Kimmy. So her and Kimmy got along pretty well. Uh, Mia's kind of an extrovert. Whenever we put a new monkey in, she'd just come up to them and be like, hi, you're new, <laughs> which is kind of scary. <laughs> Uh, seven months old, we added Alfred, our alpha male, to the group. Um, he likes Mia, too, so the males are doing really well. <laughs> um, right now, he actually protects Mia. Um, I came into holding one morning, and he had her, his arm around her. So she was, I think she was screaming and upset about something. So um, with Chuck, our lower-ranking male, he kind of doesn't want attention brought to him. So if she's upset, he might kind of, shh, be quiet, stop making noise. But since Alfred's our alpha, he doesn't really care, and he can just uh, take care of her if he wants to. Not all the time, though. <laughs> um, so we started giving her her bottle every other night. Uh, so this is the night she was in the nursery pen. The other night she was with the monkeys um, doing an intro. Um, we also had our first snow day, which we haven't had very many this year, um, and she was kind of scared at first. Um, she ran up the side of the exhibit and was like, what is this? I don't know what this is. Um, finally, she came down after some encouragement, and the other monkeys were wandering around like it was no big deal. Um, so when she discovered how fun it was, she started eating it and playing in it and running around. So it was a good, fun day for her. Um, we also started limiting her bottle to 120. Like I said before, she was eating almost 200 milliliters. But, so we cut it back in um, anticipation for her to be done with uh, formula altogether. And now she weighs almost 2 kilograms. And we gave her her last bottle on December 19th, which was one day before her eight months, which all the literature we've gotten was seven to eight months for weaning. So we are right on track. Um, by the way, finding literature for raising a baby monkey, not very easy. We found one in French, which is awesome, except for it was in French. <laughs> yeah. So future plans for Mia, right now we have uh, everyone introduced to her except for the three boys. Um, the reason why we did that is because Keisha and Higgins are leaving on Monday to go to Sioux Falls. Um, so we didn't want to introduce Keisha and Higgins if it wasn't necessary. Um, it would be a long process since they are young males. Um, they can be aggressive. They want to play, <laughs> which since they're a lot bigger than Mia, that can be kind of scary. <laughs> Uh, so we decided not to introduce them at all. So um, after Monday, we'll start doing Kisho as an introduction. So we'll have a in completely integrated monkey, hopefully in the next month. Um, so yeah. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs>
Um, we'll see what happens this year. Uh, we're not sure if we're going to have infants this year. Since we were introducing Mia, we had the troop split up and moved around, and that's not normal for them. They're used to being together all the time. So it's a little bit of a different situation. So if it happens this year, cool. If it doesn't, I get to sleep. <laughs> well, thanks for coming, everyone. <laughs>